It's a storytelling podcast. Right on. That's for stories. Right, Let's right. hear yours. Right. No, I'm not telling my story for you. Okay. Okay. okay, I told you I was going to do the Jennifer Coolidge story. And she's blowing up. This last couple of years, she's been like... There was a... When I met Jennifer Coolidge, it was 2011. I was a junior in college, and I was taking a class where we had to have our own blogs. And mine was called The B-Log... And it was just things in my college town. Each, each like, not episode, what's a, each po- blog post was about something in my college town that started with the letter B. So, like, I did one called B Road because there was a road called Broad Street that had all these nice houses. So I covered all the things on Broad Street. I did one called B Lack because there was the lack of black students at our school. And it was just like, <laughs> I would make it fit. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> It was like 80, it was probably like 92% white at my school. Did people think you were black though because you wrote that article? (laughs) No, I was just sitting next to a group of like, I don't know. Be black. It was just say black. It's just black. (laughs) But it was about how there was a lack of black students. It was clever at the time. But yeah, I don't know. I might have just written it. I did one story about how there was two foreign exchange students named Juan, and I was like, one name, two stories, or something. Wow! Like that. <laughs> wow, bro! <laughs> wow! This is bad. <laughs> but uh, Jennifer Coolidge you're, was coming. You were covering all the difficult topics. <laughs> yeah, and in this blog that nobody read, <laughs> you're wearing like a bulletproof press vest <laughs> when you're like interviewing these two Mexicans. I'm just in like a journalism 201 class. <laughs> Uh, Did you take yourself really seriously too? Like, like you were. Were you like, artsy? I'm gonna, I'm gonna help bring equality to this campus. <laughs> <laughs> Just going up to minorities, being like, I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna fix you. All it's right? like it because that intention is either I'm doing this seriously or I'm doing this sarcastically. I think I did it half-assedly, which is worse than anything. Because you're like taking something, and you're like, "Oh, that's probably a good idea. That's important." But then doing it half-ass and trying <laughs> to like kind of be funny with it, they're like, "Why are you doing that? <laughs> that's so funny. This isn't a silly topic." <laughs> but Jennifer Coolidge was coming to do stand-up. Her career had kind of stalled out, and so she had a bunch of like she had like three gay writers for her that were writing like a lot of her jokes. And she came and did an hour of stand up at our university union. And I sent her a message beforehand that I, I wanted to interview her. My friend I, Cameron's thinking about killing himself. Do you have any information? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was going to kill himself until he saw legally blonde. Yeah. And then now he just, I'm going to send that to both of you. Guys today. <laughs> now all he can do is bend and snap. And it's because of you, Jennifer Coolidge. Uh, no, I asked her if I could interview her about boobs, blondes, and Botox because those were the three things that a lot of people knew her for. And it was a shot in the dark. If she said no, obviously I wasn't going to do it, but she was like, yeah, that sounds fun. And so I went to the show. She wasn't a great stand-up. She did like 15 minutes of jokes, and then the rest of the time she was kind of doing crowd work with college age dudes being like doing the Stifler's mom thing where she's like, ooh, if I want to... Just meet me after the show. And she's just hitting on guys. That was like the next 45 minutes. Um, but then afterwards. Fucking killer hour though. We interviewed. I interviewed her. And the first thing she said was like, if I had gone to a college like this, I would have a husband. And she had this like the whole time she would give answers. It was like she was very sad about what her life had become in Hollywood. She was like, I got cheated on during Legally Blonde. And Reese Witherspoon was the only one that would tell me like. You're being cheated on. And I was like, she just felt like a floozy or like a kind of like, I don't know, like a, she was falling behind the eight ball in Hollywood. And um, she, with those looks, too. she kept saying these things like, if I, if I want to sleep with a guy your age, I got to get him drunk first. And uh, after like 30 minutes, she signed this poster for me. It said, Brent, what a great fucking time, XOXO Jennifer Coolidge. And I gave her this business card I had that had my number on it that I just made. And then after the show, I went home, and she called me and was like, hey, we're going out for drinks. Do you want to come out? And I was only 20, so I was like, no, I I can't go drink, but if you want to come smoke weed, you can come to my house. (laughs) This is a college house with like three dudes. And she was like, "Uh, no, no thanks. (laughs) (laughs) And that was it, but... Uh, in my head, 
If I were 21, I would have had a chance to sleep with Stiff or Smile. I think you would have done it. That's the story. Do you think she was just doing the same thing to you, though, that she was doing for 45 minutes on stage? No, there was this moment where our eyes locked, and she could tell that I could see the real Jennifer Coolidge, like this person within this kind of like caricature that most people saw. And I really think she was like, did you want to? For the story's sake. She looked kinda. Yeah, this story time would be a hell of a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to come on a podcast back. And then I fuck Jennifer Coolidge. Just burr crash her out, dude. Just go for it. Just know? say that it happened. Yeah. She's so powerful now, though. It's like. Because she's doing fucking. She just won an Emmy or commercials something. Commercials for Walgreens or something. No, she's on like a hit show. Yeah, fly, or what's it called? Uh, White Lotus. Yeah, yeah, White Lotus. Anyway. What's your story? She seems <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You requested that one. Hey, no, Brett, I, no, I, no. I like. Hey, story. I liked your story. Thanks. I loved your story. I kept my journalistic. The integrity. BLAC thing was for sure the best part of that, though. <laughs> That's never. Dude, been I'd watch thing. a whole show about you just interviewing minorities like the whole time and just being like, "So what's your deal?" You know what I mean? Like, so just what's like your issue? <laughs> asking them their issues, but then never like looking for yeah. solutions. Just yeah. being like, "All right, perfect, thanks." Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you struggling <laughs> with? Uh, all right. Uh, this is my story. I did. Did I tell you the story about how um, how uh, I almost lost both my testicles at uh, 19, 18, 18, something like that, 19? So oh. um, I, had a, uh, I had a varicocele. So this is, uh, yeah, two years into comedy. So I was doing a lot of drugs, and I was, like, so broke. I was so fucking broke. I was living in this apartment with three other Asian kids uh, who went to UC Irvine. One of them uh, may, did, like, comedy music kind of stuff, and the other two were, like, computer programmers and shit like that. And I would just stay in the house all day, and I would, like, get fucked up and then go to a mic and just eat a dick, and then, like, it'd be, like, an hour and a half drive back. And so I did that for, like, two years, and then I started to notice... The left side of, like, my balls was, like, getting to be, like, almost the size of, like, a tennis ball. And I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? It got to the point where, like, I couldn't sit down and shit like that. And I was like, this is insane. What is going on? And so, like, one night I just, like, woke up in, like, a bunch of pain and shit like that. And uh, I, like, I, like, went to the hospital. And they're like, you have a varicocele. You have to get surgery and shit like that. And so, like, they scheduled out the surgery and all that shit. And, uh, <laughs> and the surgery went fine. Like, it was cool. My, like, grandpa picked me up. And, like, it, it was weird. I don't know what... Not that they, they, like, molested me or something like that. But I remember him, like, just being upset about my life. You know what I mean? And uh, he picked me up. He is got he me. Chinese or is he the it's white? Japanese, dude. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma's Chinese. Yeah, I, I got him mixed up. Sorry. <laughs> You're half though, right? I'm half. Okay, I I, the question. No, I can't. I'm I, Chinese. He's Japanese. No, you don't see at that? all. You don't You're see a China? quarter. Oh, I can see the Chinese, bro. Yeah. You guys, you want to see my testicles? You'll this know. is not my best interview. Okay, we're just. <laughs> I think we knew that when you came to sit down for yeah. the podcast. It was not going to be the, my best interview. But I, this isn't. This story isn't done. It's no, and done. I'm curious. Like, at the, what point did you fucking DM Canane? These aren't related I might stories. Have, I might have, I probably in the midst of that somewhere. I like DM'd, not um, might have been like Mike Vecchione or something. Yeah, like that. it's not. I I don't DM like headliner, like crazy, <laughs> like like touring, like Motor Center guys. I do guys that like headline Magoobies only. Like that's who I'll, <laughs> that's who I'll DM. But uh, anyways, it's I, a comedy club. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> no, it's the sicko, dude. Uh. Anyways, so <clears throat> I got I got like the surgery thing, and so I was like going around to Mike's with a cane, and I had like a shaved head and shit, and I like noticed I was like, oh shit, I'm like getting like like booked on stuff like for the first time, like just like been walking around with the cane, like I was like, oh my god, I'm getting like funnier and stuff like that, like I go to my first show and shit like that, 
They're like, do you need like help on stage? Like, are you okay and stuff? I'm like, yeah, fine. What the fuck, what the fuck are you talking? They uh, people thought I had cancer. Uh, the whole time, like they thought I was dying in the comedy scene. So you just kind of let that be this ambiguous, like. No, know. after like two two shows, I, I was like, I'm not dying, and all my bookings <laughs> like fell out <laughs> immediately and shit like that. Was the shaved head just a coincidence, or did they need that for the? I was just like, I was a very sickly, and I was like, like I'm gonna shave my head. I don't know. It wasn't part of the. No. The fix your balls. They don't. When need you did to you shave your and so I was it. Like were you? It was like, like after. The, it was literally after the second show. I like, was I was weirded out by getting booked in the first place. Yeah. Like I was just like, why? Would but I like, was it like you killed on stage and like? I never these killed. Even I good did not jokes. kill. I like, did not kill. I didn't you even, even getting pity. Lines? No, no. I mean, like, I didn't talk about. I, I mean, like, I think people thought I was like sick or something like that. But they were like, why isn't this guy talking about having cancer? And this is really weird. He's doing a lot of cock jokes for some yeah. reason. Um, but I had a girlfriend at the time. And uh, her dad was a retired police officer who uh, the reason he had to retire is left ambiguous, but I'm guessing it was something not good. Uh, But um, I was I was I was living with uh, them at the time. And uh, this is like a week after the surgery. They told me, like, do not fucking have sex. Do not do not fuck. Do not even like jerk off or like this could be like devastating to you. And uh, I remember, like, being so fucking horny. Like, just, like, unbelievably horny. And, dude, I have a scar. I still have a scar to this day that goes all the way up to my, like, abdomen. Like, it's, it was, like, gnarly at the time. Like, I had to shower with, like, underwear on. Like, like my dick should not be anywhere in the vicinity of anywhere. And I was so horny. And, like, my girlfriend was like, do you just want to, like, try it or something like that? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, whatever. And, like, so... We started having sex and like it lasts like 30 seconds and I bust and immediately I feel like just a weight like shift in my balls, just a weight sh- like <laughs> like lean to the left and I'm like something's wrong and I start crying. I st- start crying, <laughs> dude. I'm like, I need to get in the pain home. or fear, fear, just fear of everything. And sh- poor my girlfriend just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what's wrong? You know what I mean? And, like, I call a hospital, and I call them, and I'm like, I just got, like, varicocele surgery, like, like I, ju- I, I just came, like, what did I do? And the dude just, like, go, looks at me, he's like, fuck, man, all right, well, this happens a lot. What happened was probably, like, the stitches just got, like, really bulged out or some shit like that. Like, it's gonna fucking hurt, but, like... There's, you're probably fine, you know? And then he just hung up and stuff like that. So nothing, I mean, like, I haven't been able to get anybody pregnant, like, since, which is good. But, like, I remember in that moment just, like, being like, oh, um, I I thought I was going to die for some reason. Like, because, like, you can bleed out from your fucking thing, like, immediately. But there's something that, like, comes over a man when you're, like, crying with your girlfriend, like, Literally immediately after coming, just like sobbing, being like, "Why did you not the, not like why did you pressure me?" But just like, "Why would you want to fuck like this? You, you did this <laughs> like just being mad at her, dude, <laughs> with my fucking soft like post surgery penis and just like a scar up to my <sighs> dude, shaved head. I looked like I was dying, dude. It was so bad. Damn, I could have fucked Jennifer Coolidge, and that still would have been a better story. Yeah, that's great. No, I'm kidding. No, 